Good evening, everyone. My name is Jeff Carroll. I'm the principal at Warhill High School. I'd like to welcome you tonight. Thank you for coming out here to Berkeley Middle School. And thank you for Berkeley uh, for hosting us tonight for our third uh, parent information night on the Pathways Project at, at Warhill High School. So tonight, I hope to give you a, uh, some background information and then some more specific information about uh, Pathways. Uh, some of the information is, will be the same if you've watched the school board presentation I did about two weeks ago. So there'll be a little redundancy if you took the time to watch that, so I apologize. But there also will be uh, other new information tonight. And as I said to the board that night, uh, this project came about uh, last spring. The Virginia Department of Education uh, offered all high schools uh, throughout the Commonwealth uh, the opportunity to apply for one of five planning grants to redesign or innovate high school. And with re receiving one of those grants, uh, the schools receive uh, $50,000 and one year to plan, and then they're made a commitment to actually implement those plans and ideas. So WJCC, we formed a partnership with William & Mary. Uh, we wrote the uh, grant proposal and submitted it, and we were one of the five selected. And so then since July 1st, uh, both myself and uh, many uh, teachers on my team at Warhill, uh, staff at William & Mary, and uh, other uh, faculty and staff throughout the school division, we've been working on actually imagining and reimagining re high school. And what we've come up with is what we're presenting to you tonight, the Pathways Project. Uh, so that's just a little background of where it's come from. One of the things that's been exciting uh, for me uh, this year as part of the planning grant, we've had the opportunity to travel to uh, various high schools throughout the country to look at their ideas and how they're doing high school differently. We've been to uh, Innovations High School in Salt Lake City. Uh, there's a Warrior Tech and Magna Vista High School here in Virginia. Uh, I've taken a team of teachers to the Apprentice School down in Newport News. And then we also had the opportunity to go to uh, High Tech High in San Diego. And uh, if you've seen the, the film, Most Likely to Succeed, uh, William and Mary, they've shown it twice this year, once in the fall and just a couple weeks ago. It really encapsulates uh, the idea of why we think high school needs to be uh, redesigned or innovated. So just to kind of give everyone a context of some of the ideas and things that we've been thinking about, I'm going to start off tonight. We have uh, just a short clip uh, from Most Likely to Succeed.
So as I said, it just gives you a little bit of idea of some of the uh, concepts that we've been kicking around for the past year. And I will give the uh, disclaimer, our goal is not to recreate high tech high here in Williamsburg, but we have tried to capture some of those key ideas and concepts that they use uh, to increase student engagement. So one of the questions I've gotten asked by many uh, parents since I did the school board presentation is, who is Pathways for? What, what type of student? And my answer would be it's for any student who wants to experience a different learning environment and a different program of studies. So any student uh, could uh, benefit from this different uh, opportunity. And our, our goal is we've developed Pathways is to find a way to make education and the learning experience more personal, meaningful, and relevant to our students. Because sometimes our students feel a disconnect uh, between what they're learning in school, uh, how it affects them on a daily basis, or how it might impact uh, their ability uh, to be successful in the future. And so we're looking for ways to uh, increase those connections. Uh, we're going to look at mastery of content versus seat time. So uh, using the concept of um, competency-based learning, whereas when a student can demonstrate that they know a certain concept, whether it's in two hours, two days, two months, two years, they'll move on. It's not, OK, you've mastered everything in this course, but however, it's October 15th and the semester doesn't end until January 27th. So you just need to stay in this room and continue to do some things for the rest of the, uh, this semester. So using competencies, um, really trying to identify and work on what they have learned, not just increasing deeper learning, not just worried about preparing a student for a test, that we want them to have deeper learning experiences and more meaningful that way. And then trying to personalize learning wherever we can, whether it's within a course or overall with the program of studies, giving choice and options, letting students have control over pace, the place where they might do their work, may not be in a traditional classroom if you're using an online environment, they could work after school, before school, whenever they feel the, the need uh, to do some work. So really finding ways to personalize uh, the learning environment and their studies. Again, as we've uh, worked on Pathways this year, uh, we've come up with four guideposts or fo four key concepts that are at the, the center of this program. That we have used to help develop it, and then we're going to introduce to all the students involved in Pathways. Uh, the first is design thinking. Uh, we actually had an opportunity, I took about 20 teachers from uh, Warhill, again, uh, other members of WJCC Central Office, and faculty and staff from both the School of Education and the School of Business at William & Mary, and we spent uh, an afternoon at their design lab and worked on design thinking and then learned about design thinking and uh, used the design thinking process to start imagining what pathways could be. And so for those of you who aren't familiar with it, uh, design thinking is a, uh, it's a formal uh, way of problem solving, but the idea is it looks at solutions and creation of solutions so that you can look at alternative solutions at the same time. So it's not focused on just solving a specific problem a certain way. It realizes that there could be very alternative uh, solutions uh, in trying to solve a problem. And that you use creative trial and error. And then project-based learning. Uh, that's what you see at High Tech High. Their entire uh, campus is based on project-based learning. Uh, two of the courses that we're going to introduce to you tonight are built around that concept of project-based learning. And what it, that is, it's a dynamic approach to teaching in which students explore real-world problems and challenges. Uh, with this type of active and engaged learning, students are inspired to obtain a deeper knowledge of subjects they're studying. So again, trying to go more in-depth and not just preparing for a test. A blended learning flexible uh, model. 
a lot of jargon there, but what that means is uh, using digital learning, f teachers can facilitate small group instruction, individual pacing, and self-directed online courses. Uh, using that digital curriculum, teachers meet the needs of individual students, and the instruction can be delivered uh, using a variety of methods, including traditional teaching, uh, digital textbook, self-paced, self-directed learning, and students move through this online course at their own pace. So they, again, they have the power to choose pace, path, and time in this non-traditional model of instruction. And then 21st century learning. Uh, it's a buzzword, it gets thrown around a lot, but what we consider it to be, it's building upon traditional core knowledge. Students still need to have a certain core knowledge, but 21st century skills incorporate learning information and communication skills, thinking and creative problem solving skills, interpersonal and self-direction skills, and skills to make the best use of that information and communication technology. So helping them not only learn information, but how do they communicate that and apply it to different situations. So those are four of the key concepts that we have. So if your son or daughter decides to join us uh, for Pathways, uh, the first opportunity, the first introduction to it will be uh, the week of August 29th. And as I said, we're going to introduce those four key concepts over the course of the week uh, to our students. Uh, these, uh, this boot camp, so to speak, will be from 8 o'clock to 12 o'clock each day. And uh, on Monday, we'll uh, get to know each other. We'll introduce the concept of uh, design thinking, do a pathways overview, and start about the goal setting process for each student. Now on Tuesday, they're just going to participate in freshman orientation as any other uh, student at Warhill will. One of the key concerns that we have, and I've heard from parents, if they choose, you know, if their son or daughter chooses to be a part of Pathways, we don't want them to feel isolated and off in a corner at, at Warhill. They are part of the class of 2020. That's hard to believe, but it's a, next freshman will be class of 2020. They are part of that class. They're going to interact with all their other classmates. There are going to be opportunities for them to feel a part of Warhill and not just, oh, I'm a Pathways kid over in a corner. And so one of the first ways to do that is to have them participate in freshman orientation just as the other 250 or so freshmen will. On Wednesday, we'll introduce the concept of project-based learning to them uh, because, again, that's going to be some of these ideas are going to be very different than what they've experienced in the past, and we know we're going to have to do some unlearning of classroom routines and how they play school, and then some new teaching of how we're going to play school at Pathways. On Wednesday, uh, Thursday, we'll do the uh, introduce blended learning. They'll be assigned their uh, laptop. Each student in Pathways will have their uh, own personal laptop assigned to them. And then on Friday, we'll talk about 21st century learning. Uh, we'll follow up on that goal setting idea. You know, what are the exit criteria? How, do you, how will you finish pathways in three to four years? How can you advocate for yourself? And then we'll talk about next steps as we begin the year. So with pathways, again, as we've imagined it, it's, uh, if you think of the concept, we've divided it in our minds early high school and advanced high school. And we think of early high school, we call it highways, that these are key experiences that we want all freshmen, all students to experience in Pathways, no matter where their ultimate goal will be, that these are essential experiences that will help them on their journey throughout high school and beyond. So we have five key components to that. As I talked about, the Design Your Roadmap is the uh, boot camp, our first introduction to help them uh, kind of get started with Pathways. And then some of the materials that you have, if you want to look at it, uh, we have our two keystone courses, uh, Humanities by Design. So that's one of our project-based classes that we've developed this past year. Uh, it will be a co-taught class with a social studies teacher and an English teacher, uh, double blocked. Uh, again, based on project-based learning, uh, they'll receive a social studies credit for this course. And uh, 
they'll uh, explore global issues and then trying to find those connections with global issues and apply it to local community solutions. And they'll be out in the community. We imagine community members coming in and being a part of this at different times. Uh, so again, uh, and then while they're in humanities by design, they'll also be enrolled in what we're calling Pathways English. Uh, and that's their language arts credit but that will be delivered in that blended learning format that uh, I've just talked about. So it's an online course, but they'll also have an opportunity where they'll be working with teachers uh, each day. It's not just, it's, again, it's different. It's not just I've signed up, I'm taking an online class and no one ever interacts with me. Uh, there'll be teachers monitoring it, there'll be teachers interacting with them, there'll be teachers doing lessons in small group or whole group, depending on concepts that uh, they need to know to be successful in that online course. Then we also, for our science, we have physics by design, uh, another project-based course that we've uh, developed. Um, if you bear with me, I'm actually going to read the technical description my team of teachers gave me because uh, I'm not a physics guy, so uh, I, there are some good concepts here, but I want to make sure I get them right. So the physics by design uh, includes applied mathematics, uh, science and technology as tools through which we can understand and interact with the physical and digital worlds in an effort to build conceptual understandings and 21st century skills. Uh, it's an applied physics course, and they'll develop mathematical literacy and algebra, trigonometry, and key concepts of physics through a series of open-ended, real-world projects. Student success in developing a final product for each project will hinge upon applying concepts of energy, projectile motion, circuits and fluid dynamics, while supporting design decisions with right angle trigonomic functions, exponents, error analysis, and statistics. And when a student enrolls in physics by design, they'll also be co-enrolled in Pathways Math. Again, uh, math personalized, but delivered in that uh, blended learning format online. So again, for, that might be a student who hasn't taken algebra. They could even start at pre-algebra if that's the case. If we have students who have come in and they've successfully completed geometry, we're going to start off with algebra two and then help them make decisions, okay, what's going to be next after algebra two? Is it pre-calculus? Is it trigonometry? Is it uh, probability and statistics? Starting to think about where do you want to go? What's your ultimate goal? And design uh, math choices. Uh, that meet those personalized needs. And then uh, we have a course called Design Your On-Ramp because again one of the ideas that we feel there's a disconnect between learning and the real world for our students is they don't uh, have an opportunity to do in-depth career exploration now and to learn about skills that they need uh, to be successful in the job market no matter what jobs or careers that they're interested in. Uh, so in this course, the students are going to work independently and collaboratively uh, with community members, uh, explore real-world career options, and they're also going to spend time to determine themselves as learners. They're going to learn about how did I learn, how do I like to learn, what's the best way for me to learn, and then how does that apply to course uh, careers I could be or should be interested in. And then upon completion of this course, our, our goal is for each student to develop a personalized plan that uh, is a culmination of their self-reflection, of their strengths, uh, their explorations and careers, and their educational experiences that they will need to meet these learning goals over the rest of their high school career. And then the design your career. After they've completed on-ramp or at some point during the on-ramp when they've identified some career clusters or, or fields that they may be interested in, uh, such as finance or health sciences or manufacturing, uh, we're going to get them connected with an introductory course because it's one thing to say as a freshman, yes, I'm interested in finance and then I'm going to apply to college and I'm going to be a finance major and I've never taken a finance course and then I get to college and I take that first finance course and ooh, 
this really isn't that much fun or I'm not that good at it. Maybe I should have done something else. So we want to introduce them to uh, courses in areas that they think they have an interest in so that we can support them through that. And then by the end of that course, they've got their own information to decide, am I still interested in it? And do I have skills to be successful in this career field? And so those could be a traditional uh, class offered at Warhill, such as some of our Project Lead the Way courses, like uh, uh, Introduction to Engineering Design, or uh, Principles of Biomedical Technology, or it could be something that uh, could be an online course that uh, we're able to provide for them, uh, and that we don't have a traditional course for, uh, depending on their career interest. So what might a typical, and I, I use the word hesitantly, typical, because again, things are going to be very personalized. That's our goal with Pathways. Uh, schedule look like for one of our freshmen next year. So in the fall, uh, we, we're, we're planning that you only take one of the project-based classes at, at one time, so you can really focus on that and learn that. So in this example, I have a student taking Humanities by Design uh, in the fall. Again, it's a double block class. There will be a language arts teacher and a social studies teacher, and students will receive a social studies credit for that at the end of the semester. They'll take Design Your On-Ramp through our AEP period, Academic Enrichment period. Uh, that's a 30-minute block that all three high schools have uh, that gives students an opportunity to uh, get uh, extra assistance on courses or to accelerate uh, in courses. So we're going to take that time and uh, build On-Ramp through that. And they'll be taking On-Ramp over the course of the year. And we imagine, uh, as we're working on IONRAP also, that they'll be in groups of eight to 12. Those will be small groups. So we also want to build in a, a mentoring component so those teachers working with that small group get to really know those students and help them design that personalized learning plan by the end of the year. This student then, uh, third block, has Pathways English, so it's an opportunity, again, that blended learning format where a teacher will be available, do some small group instruction, can do some one-on-one -on -one instruction, but also the student can pursue uh, the online content at their own pace as quickly or as uh, slowly as needed. And then uh, they still need to work towards uh, high school graduation requirements. So again, that's another question I've been asking. You know, do they still have to meet requirements? Are they going to get a high school diploma at the end of all this? Yes, they still need to meet requirements. And yes, we want to have them earn a diploma. So this student perhaps took Spanish 1 this year at, uh, at Berkeley, and they're ready for Spanish 2. So we get them into a traditional Spanish 2 class at Warhill. And then in the, in the spring, this student switches over to physics by design and begins the pathways math continues in Design Your On-Ramp. Uh, we do a block of Pathways Math for them. And again, uh, if they're doing really well in the blended learning format, um, maybe they only need Pathways Math and they're continuing English or they've finished English already and they don't need the extra support in English anymore. Uh, if they need continued support in English, that block four could be Pathways English again. Or the example I give with this student, they're doing well with the English, they're working on math in the blended format, and so now they're going to pick up health and PE as they're in a traditional uh, setting. So that's what a uh, typical schedule might look like for one of our students. Uh, not too different, uh, again, some of the questions I've been asked, especially making that connection or how students will feel different. Uh, they'll change classes when the bell rings, Class changes will occur. Um, again, I was asked this question. I said, well, you know, a typical freshman's really not that observant. So um, your peers who aren't in Pathways, they're just going to see your son or daughter going into a classroom, coming out of the classroom, doing things just like any other freshman uh, would next year at Warhill. Yes, sir? How many freshmen total at Warhill? Uh, Typically, uh, currently, I'd say a typical freshman class is about 275. Okay, so about a third will be uh, impacted. That's that's our goal. If we have if we have 100, yep. So, um, 
they're not gonna stand out by walking around with their laptop. Uh, oftentimes students stick those in a backpack anyway, but also we have bring your own device uh, policy at, at Warhill, so I have many of my students already walking around with laptops. So again, uh, I don't think they're gonna stand out and if, if a student or a family ever thought they were standing out or had a concern about that, uh, we would encourage them to communicate that to, to me or to any of us on staff and we would be working with the family to uh, address that concern. Uh, we want them to feel part of the War Hill community. Again, this, this one's more for parents than for students. Uh, some of the assessments that we're, we'll plan to use, uh, we're hoping the, uh, uh, we can't get rid of standardized assessments completely. But for example, with our Pathways English, what we want to do, instead of using the SOL assessment, we want to use uh, an alternative assessment that's currently available called Work Keys. One of the reasons we want to use work keys is work keys is recognized by many employers and most colleges and community colleges as a placement test. So again, the idea behind it, if a student has to take an assessment, a standardized assessment, let's make it a standardized assessment that they're going to get some bang for their buck out of. It's not just, oh, I took the SOL, it's, yeah, I got my verified credit, but I never use that again. I can't use that anywhere. We're looking to find ways that when we do provide standardized assessments uh, that are required by Virginia, that it's something that will uh, provide some other opportunities later on. Uh, the physics by design, uh, we're working on, there'll be by portfolio to give the verified credit. Uh, Pathways Math right now, uh, we're looking into other options with uh, that the state might accept as alternative assessments uh, for the math assessment, but at this time, I'll stand in front of you and say it will probably be the, be the SOL, but we're hoping that will change. Uh, during the design your on-ramp, there's actually a career readiness assessment uh, that earns an industry certification, which is a graduation requirement for uh, students now. And it's called the Virginia Workplace Readiness uh, Test. And so they'll take that as part of the uh, on-ramp course and get that out of the way. And then to design your career, depending on the course that they take, there may or may not be a, a, uh, an assessment or it may be another industry certification. Many of our career and tech, uh, CTE courses have industry certifications kind of built into them. So again, it will depend on the course that uh, the student chooses. So an example, uh, we have uh, three students. We have Lauren, Justin, and Shelley. Uh, they've all identified health sciences as a career cluster that they want to uh, pursue. Uh, they've all uh, gone through highways. Uh, they acquire workplace readiness during constructor on-ramp. And they've each chosen a course called Principles of Biomedical Science as their health science readiness course. And then they complete all the other early high school requirements, all the highway requirements. So now, after a student completes those core experiences that we want all students to have, we then work with them as they identify their personalized learning plan to choose one of five expressways. So they could choose to focus on AP and dual enrollment classes. They could choose to pursue early college. They could choose to just go back into a traditional classroom setting uh, at Warhill and then complete a portfolio for the final graduation requirement. They could look at two uh, industry options where they're either looking for a career study certificate and doing a more informal internship, or maybe perhaps a formal apprenticeship and earning uh, industry certification that will help prepare them for the workplace immediately after graduation. So how that, might that look for our three students? Got Lauren. Lauren decides she wants to be a doctor and she needs to apply to a competitive four-year college. So she focuses on a rigorous course of study uh, through the remainder of high school, including AP Biology, AP Chemistry, uh, human body systems, medical interventions, biomedical innovation to prepare herself for that college app, uh, rigorous college application. Justin decides he wants to be a paramedic. Uh, 
so, and his goal is to complete the paramedic program at Thomas Nelson. So he's going to take human body systems, medical interventions. Uh, he enters early college, which is a, a program that Warhill is currently uh, piloting for WJCC. He completes English 110 and 111. He completes Introduction to Health Sciences at Thomas Nelson, uh, which is a concurrent course that uh, we'll be offering next year with Thomas Nelson. And then he go, moves on in the spring to take his EMT basic and clinical and other prerequisites for the paramedical program. So that, again, upon graduation, he's ready to go into that two-year program and complete it in two years. Then we have Shelly. Shelly decides she wants to be an occupational therapy aide, an OTA. She chooses expressway number four. Uh, she, her studies include uh, human body systems and biology. And then she looks into online coursework that we offer because we don't have some coursework specifically uh, to prepare her to be an OTA. So she does some online coursework. And then she completes an internship at, at Riverside. So between the online classes and her on-the-job training, she's able to earn her OTA certificate and, again, is ready to enter that career field uh, upon graduation. So our three students, they've ended up on three different expressways and three different uh, final outcomes of pathways. Four-year college, uh, emergency medical services, or becoming an OTA. So the path ahead. Uh, next steps after you uh, are here tonight. Uh, review and complete the application if you'd like to do so uh, at this time or you know, in the next few weeks. Uh, it, you have a, I think you received a hard copy of it tonight and then uh, also it's available online if you prefer to do it online. Uh, also I've had uh, people already, they've taken the hard copy and scanned it in, created a PDF and just simply emailed it to me. That's acceptable also, whatever's easiest for you and your family. Uh, we have an, another presentation uh, on Tuesday, May 17th at 6.30. And I'll encourage everyone to come out to that. That's going to be a hands-on uh, format to try, and we're going to do some uh, touring around uh, Warhill. My teachers who are going to be directly involved with Pathways will be there that night. So even if you leave here tonight and you're thinking, no way, this isn't for me, come out for, on the 17th and give us that opportunity and make sure that this isn't for you. And then the applications are due June 1st, 2016. And then we'll start to notify families uh, starting on uh, Monday, June 6th. And uh, I, don't, I don't think I've said it yet tonight, we're uh, accepting uh, 100 students into the program. Uh, it'll, if we end up with 102 applications, um, the superintendents back there, I'm sure Dr. Constantino will, will, will make room for 102 students. Uh, if we only have a few more over 100, we're not going to turn uh, just a few away. If we end up with 150 or 200 applications, uh, we're going to then go to a, a lottery system. And then we'll notify uh, students uh, and families at that point after the, the lottery. Questions, if you want to look at the, the pamphlet, if you haven't had a chance to look at it tonight, uh, there's a page of uh, FAQs there that uh, I encourage you to look at. And then also I just want to allow some time tonight to take uh, questions uh, from the floor. I'll try to answer those. And, and then also after we finish the questions from the floor, if you think of something after you leave tonight, uh, feel free to, to email me and I will uh, get back to you as quickly as possible with, a, with an answer. So I've already seen some hands up here. Yes, ma'am. Um, in, this, in this brochure it says, you know, students will incorporate it blended and online, but it sounds like the blended is online with the teacher there. It's the, for the Pathways Math or Pathways English, it's a blended format. Um, for that design your career, depending on the course that they choose, it may be more of what you think of just online. Where, so like toward the end. Correct. Okay. Um, how many students will be in each class, like in that typical schedule, if you have 100? Back to the schedule. Um, in the humanities by design and the physics by design, 
with it's double block, two teachers, and we'll have up to 50 students in there. We're redesigning a space that we're going to have specifically for pathways that will be able to accommodate. It'll be more, uh, larger than it'll be more like a double classroom um, to give them in there. The other courses they'll be uh, traditional class size, so about 25. Are these new teachers you're hiring? Uh, no, they're coming from uh, existing staff. We've been working with, uh, and that's something else I want to emphasize, uh, we have our partnership with William and Mary. Um, they've been working with us in uh, many different ways this year. So we've been doing uh, professional development and teacher training uh, all year with staff who are going to be involved in uh, teaching this. And also staff, uh, we've been doing some training because uh, the teachers have gotten very excited about this opportunity. And even though they may not be directly involved in Pathways, they've wanted to be a part of the training this year. And actually, I have some teachers who have started to uh, introduce some of these concepts into their current courses. That's how excited they are about this, uh, this change. Uh, the other thing that I will say for uh, William and Mary that uh, may be important to parents, it's an idea that we're borrowing from High Tech High. High Tech High, they create all their own courses because they're a charter school. They use the California University system to certify those courses so that when they create a course and put it on their student's transcript, the people know that the California University system has reviewed that course and it's a legitimate course. So we've worked in partnership with William and Mary in creating physics by design and humanities by design, and they're going to stand behind and certify those courses so that when it does come time for a college application or a job application that requires a transcript, that teacher, uh, that parents and then future employers or colleges know that these are legitimate courses that were created. They're just not made up. I have a question. Um, first of all, if, if you choose to do this, is it, is it a commitment for uh, four years? No. And second, then, can you go to governor's school if you go this route? Um, well, I'll, yes, you could because we would, you know, again, we're going to personalize those pathways and work with each student and each family to figure out what's the best opportunity you know, for their ultimate learning goals. I will give a plug for Warhill. We are a governor's school also in uh, engineering and information technology, and we're hoping to expand that also. So the same governor's seal that a student can earn by traveling all the way to Newport News, they can meet those requirements at Warhill without leaving the Warhill campus if those are areas that they're interested in. And also, logistically, um, what about transportation? Uh, I'm not in charge of transportation, but we have a commitment from the superintendent and the school board that transportation for all students, no matter where they're zoned, they'll be provided to get them to Warhill. Yes, sir. So if a student, like, master, well, if a student, like, for example, sure, if there's a student, for example, pa uh, passes their assessment in English, and this is like the second, second year or so, the next thing, for some reason or other, they transfer out of the program, or all bets off in their new high school and they have to take the remaining three years of English. No, no, all these, we're gonna ensure that all these courses have course codes that, um, that can go on their transcript and students are, we're still awarding credit. How students are demonstrating the earning of that credit is changing. But what we understand is while we're trying to redesign high school, we're re not redesigning the college application process, or we're not redesigning the, the job market, that students are still gonna need a high school diploma and a high school transcript. And again, people move, you know, you could start, family moves, you need a transcript that, that moves with you and recognizes the work that your son or daughter has done up until that point. <laughs> Outside of sports, how does like orchestra, band, um, those kind of things take effect if they have chosen? They would have that opportunity. So just you know, for example, where I've got the Spanish two or health and PE, if if band or chorus or, or some other elective is a priority for that student, uh, we can get them into that traditional course uh, at War Hill and then figure out other ways to meet those other requirements. So will there be, I guess, 
I guess you said on May 17th, would that be an option to be able to go over their already elected schedule that they've kind of made up through their high school that they will actually be attending and kind of redesign their schedule if they decide not on, not on May 17th. Once we start notifying families on June 6th, that's what I have, I have one counselor. So all 100 students in Pathways will be assigned one specific counselor at War Hill who's been a part of this process all year and gone through this training also. Once we start notifying families on June 6th, that's what we're going to be working on right away is, okay, you've submitted a traditional schedule, let's take a look at it and figure out what is your schedule going to look like for next year and make those adjustments. But again, that's going to be in communication with families so we know, all right, you've got three electives there. What are the two that are priorities for you? And uh, you, which ones do you want? Thank you. Yep. <laughs> I have a quick question. Um, yep. Which online program are you using? You keep talking about online classes. So I'm just curious. It hasn't been board approved yet. That's coming this <laughs> Tuesday night. So I'm not sure if... Uh, uh, I'm allowed to say that. Um, one, one, some of the some of the courses like the Pathways English, like we're creating ourselves, so we're designing that ourselves. Some of the other like the career content or some of the electives, we'll be purchasing from a, a an online vendor. So we've gone through a um, purchasing process. Two questions. Oh. Uh, first question is, um, say at the point of the semester, the kid changes his mind. I can't do this, it's not for me. What is the fallback? Let's do uh, The fallback would be, uh, as we currently do at Warhill, when we have students who are uh, aren't being successful in a, in a placement. We're going to work with the student and their family to figure out uh, what do they need to be successful and how can we make that happen as quickly as possible. Um, so whether it's moving back into a traditional uh, class um, right away, and again, some of it might be also timing. Uh, if it's October 1st, that's an easy transition. If it's January 1st, we're going to say, okay, let's try to finish out the semester and make some changes at the semester. Uh, but we're going to work with those families and, and we're not going to hold somebody uh, into something that they don't feel comfortable with or they don't think they can be successful with. Okay. Um, second question is, uh, I, I like the plan. It sounds very uh, interesting. Um, and I was curious as to what the diploma the students get, a standard diploma or a it, again, it'll depend on, it'll be up to that individual student what they want to work towards, just uh, you know, as that's an option for students now, whether I'm working towards uh, a standard diploma or also an advanced diploma. With that being said, just um, we had quite a bit of conversation about this uh, last night at Tuano. Um, Virginia is looking at changing graduation requirements anyway. So what you know standard and advanced to be at this point in time may change over the course of the next three or four years anyway. So we're going to, whatever those graduation requirements are, we're going to work with uh, students to make sure that they meet those requirements. Sorry, just for the question. That's okay. Um, say for instance, like this gentleman said, if a student decides this is not for me, and Warhill is not their zone school. Will they have to transfer to their zone school, or will they get to stay at Warhill? Um, I would say, at, at least for the the freshman year, again, we would um, work with the family if there was a desire to go back to the the zone school. We would work to make that happen. If the desire was to stay at Warhill, they could stay through uh, Warhill at least through freshman year. And then I think it's time to have another conversation of. Okay, are you staying or going for you know, next year and beyond? And just another quick question. If a child has an IEP, how well does this program work for that child with an IEP? Um, we think it, it's a great option for all students. Um, if you look at IEPs, a lot of times the accommodations that are in an IEP are based around um, pace and place. You know, they need a small group. They need uh, extra time. Well, with these options, they're going to have choices th over those things anyway. So it's going to be 
kind of almost like an accommodation for all students. Um, so we, th we think it's a, a good viable option for, for any student, whether they have an IO IEP or a 504. Was, uh, very much my question. It seems like overall it's almost a supercharged individualized education program. Uh, will the same uh, meetings still be supported and that sort of thing? A little bit of an extra planning if a student does have an IEP? Yes, we would still be doing the, the traditional <coughs> uh, IEP process also and having those meetings also. Right now, I have four counselors for 1,200 students. So, I'm just saying, as opposed yep. to a parent trying to get in contact with the counselor and the going back and forth. Uh, as I said, right now, I have four counselors with 1,200 students, and I'd say that we have a good reputation at Warhill responding to all our student and family needs and requests. Okay, I mean, with the new program, you're going to be I, there. I, I know. <laughs> if I didn't believe that, I wouldn't stand up here and say that. And they have counselors, but they also have mentors, too. Correct. Those are the ones that work. Right, we have teachers that are working with them also. So going back to the band thing, like, for example, my son is wanting to continue band. He's also wanting to continue Spanish. How, I don't, I mean, I don't know how that, how would that work if he wanted to do band and say all four years, but he also wanted to do Spanish at least two years? Just as it currently does, we'll have to, you know, plan it out and look at the schedule just for, for next year, band would probably be uh, a one semester course and Spanish would be a one semester course. Um, or you know, another possibility would be, uh, and again, I'm just speaking off the top of my head, if the Spanish, uh, if band was on an AB schedule, uh, alternating days for the entire year, uh, we might offer a Spanish course that fills in on the opposite day or perhaps that we'll look at you know, some blended learning format for him to, to pick up that Spanish credit that works with that uh, so that he's still getting the opportunity to go to band. Um, go, I don't know if you I'm having a hard time visualizing this like 50 kids in one room with only two teachers, but they're all kind of working at their own pace. If they, a lot of them might need help at the same time, or I don't, I don't know. Can you describe it a little? How would that? I'm, um, I don't know how to describe it. Uh, you know, there, it's going to be a large space. They're, they're uh, going to be uh, working independently at times. You know, the teachers will be facilitating it. Sometimes there'll be whole group instruction. Sometimes they'll be with uh, small group instruction. Um, some of the things that we've Actually, I've uh, sent some of my teachers to. If you've ever been to a great elementary classroom, uh, that one teacher can facilitate multiple things going on uh, in their classroom uh, individually and in small groups. Uh, and so we've also spent some time trying to learn some skills from our elementary colleagues on how to do those things in the classroom. Um, going back to learning at your own pace, so if someone is learning faster than, say, average, Trigonometry, for example. Could they then theoretically complete that whole course in a much faster Correct. time? Correct. If they the complete time. those comp competencies and they're, you know, it's November 1st and trigonometry is done, we're going to find something else in that blended learning format, whatever that next course could be, and not say, well, you've got to wait until February 1st to start the second semester. Like, you know, no, the, the humanities by design and physics by design are their project-based courses. Those aren't, there will not be an online component to those two courses. Okay, because my daughter took something like this um, in fourth and fifth grade, and it was called blended learning. And they only went to school two and a half days a week. 
they will be in school every day. Correct. Like yes, they will. No, that was, it was actually very, very amazing. Um, she'd go to school for the two days a week, and they were on hand learning. Like, they'd do the mm -hmm. biology things. They would do the, you know, body and everything physical. Um, and then she would go home for two days a week, and she worked on blackboards, turned everything in. I, I never saw paper. Everything was computerized. And she worked at her own pace. Some kids went slower. Some kids went faster. And they just completed. They had, like, task-oriented things, and they checked off mm -hmm. the boxes of assignments. just like a college student. And when she was done, she got to do more hands-on stuff. She got to do more um, advanced learning. And so I'm kind of trying to figure out if this is the same thing she's it's, done. Your description is very similar to, you know, how we envision it. So, but the humanities by design and physics by design, there's not a specific online component to those two courses, but that's why it's coupled with the Pathways English and the Pathways Math. Those online blend it are supporting the concepts being studied in the project-based class at the same time. Okay. Because I, I kind of have an idea of what blended learning yep. is. I'm just trying to figure out if you're identifying it the same way. Because we did a pilot program in our other state, and that's what they did. And it was very successful, I mean, just to so you know, it was very successful on the elementary school level. And they were moving it up into the middle school level, and it was working very well there, too, before we left. So this has great possibilities. And kids that were um, IEP kids were in the class, as well as my daughter, who wants to go to government school, which I'm glad she asked that question. Um, so we're trying to figure out if this is going to be something that she's going to enjoy and fall into. Will she have to do sports here, or can she do it from her old home school? Thanks. If if a student comes into Pathways, they become a full-time Warhill student. So for athletics and extracurriculars, they would do it through Warhill. Okay, because we have a daughter going to governor's school next year, but she's in another high school, and that means I'll have four schools for the kids. <laughs> <laughs> so, I'm trying to figure out how <laughs> Any other questions? Last yes, sir. Um, so just to make sure I understand, uh, you may have said this before, Matt, but um, theoretically, is it possible that the pathways in English or pathways in math can it be for a full year, fall and spring, or does it have to be for a semester? They're going to start in the semester, but again, depending on the student and how much time they need, they may finish in the semester, they may need the entire year, they may need the summer also, and then we're going to continue to work with them on that. Yes. Yes. Um, you said that the administration designed the English also. So is, is that that also not online, or it partially is? The pathways English. That's that's in the blended learning form. That's the online blended learning. The the pathways English and the pathways math. So will some of the kids that are kind of at a similar level be grouped sometimes in those courses? Could be. I mean, not necessarily. Not necessarily. I'm going to leave that up to my teachers because they're going to be more of an expert than I am on that. So at the May 17th um, meeting, will we get to meet all the teachers that are going to be involved? I, I don't know if every single one of them are going to be there, but uh, some of them will be there that, that night. And we're planning some uh, different activities for everyone to participate in to try to understand some of these concepts uh, also. Like an optional class that they can pick whichever class you're going to. So hypothetically, could they double up on math, double up on Spanish, double up on science, like my kids have done in the past? That they went away. The, do you mean the design your on ramp? Yeah, the the design extra class. Like, is that a 
No, that's the an actual class. That's, a, that's an actual class with we're, we're working with William and Mary to design. So um, and that we feel is a key component of experiences for them. Plus AEP again, that's only thirty minutes. Yeah, I'm, I'm talking about the four the four block because in my other high school experiences, my daughter took Spanish one, two, three, and four, and is done. Um, and she took like four different maths, and she's you know going on to governor's school with that. And then science, she doubled up on science. So would they be eligible to do that kind of thing? So they would be eligible for the governor's school per se in this block system. Correct. I mean, whether students in pathways or not, we're on a block at War Hill High School. So. Yeah, but it looks like you have that design your on ramp thing is is for something you just said it was different than maybe doubling up on math or science or Spanish or something. No, else. Like, um, do that. design your your on ramp is during our academic enrichment period. Okay. So right now, no students take any course during AEP. Um, the math, they could still double up on that. Correct. Go back to the end. As I say, if you think of a question after you leave tonight, um, please feel free to email me, or also you can go to the, uh, the website with the Pathways Project. Um, and we are posting information uh, up there and updating that. And again, even if you're still very unsure about uh, this opportunity for uh, your son or daughter, I encourage you to come out to Warhill on uh, May 17th and go through those experiences and meet some of my staff and see if that will uh, help inform your decisions. So thank you again for being here tonight. <laughs>